My next guest fills her days as the owner of Mission Works Consulting, a nonprofit management consulting firm in Denver. By night, she teaches advocacy at Regis University. Prior to her year in China, Joanna created Kids Yoga Speak, an online tutorial to teach Mandarin Chinese to children through the use of yoga and storytelling. Please welcome Joanna Garten. <laughs> So I was, you teach at Regis, right? I do. Tell me about that, because since we're at Metro. Right, is that competition for you? <sighs> no, really. I'm no. sorry. No, I, I personally like to play nice. But... Okay, good, let's do that Okay. Then. I teach in the graduate program of nonprofit management. Okay. And I teach advocacy for nonprofits. What is so advocacy like, what for is nonprofits? That? So it's helping nonprofits sort of navigate the legislative process okay. to get things done, awesome. get funding, so and kind of, advance their mission. Yeah, finding funding for nonprofits yeah. is probably one of the biggest yeah, exactly. ones. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Do you enjoy teaching? I do. I How love did you it. get into teaching? I love it. Um, that's a really good question. I, I'm a lawyer by training. Okay. But I've done teaching sort of all my life. I taught English in Taiwan for a few years. Wow. And I loved that. And so I just sort of fell into this because I wasn't really loving practicing law in the traditional sense. But I wanted to keep my finger in it. Okay. And so this sort of helped me combine yeah. legal work and teaching. Exactly. Yeah. And then tell me a little bit about teaching Mandarin online. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. What's that like? Yeah. Yeah. So that's fun. So that's something I started after I had kids. I was teaching them different words in Mandarin because we were preparing to go to China for a year. Okay. And I was sort of teaching them while I was practicing yoga at home, and I found that if I taught them one or two words over the course of two or three minutes of yoga, that that would really stick in their brains. Okay. To teach them a word as I was making movements seemed to help them learn a little bit faster. Okay. So I started doing that and had all these yoga routines kind of created to different yeah. Mandarin words. Do you still do that or is that kind of? A little bit. It's kind of faded away because now I have a teenage boy and he's not so Not so much into, into yoga, yoga anymore. anymore. Yeah. Oh, no. That's how it goes. So, but this was preparing to go to China right. for a year. So right. tell me about that trip going to China. What did you do? Oh, right? That was great. So both of my kids are adopted from China. <laughs> and so we knew, my husband and I knew at some point we wanted to live abroad. Yeah. And so when we kind of decided to do this, China made a lot of sense, yeah. obviously. And I spoke Chinese because I had lived in Taiwan many years ago. And they were Chinese, so it made sense to do that. And so we moved over there and we lived there for a year and it was exhilarating and depressing and hard and uh, the most challenging, uplifting, kind of transformative experience yeah. of our lives all in one year. Wow. It was kind of everything in one year. Yeah. So. What were some of the things you did while you were over there? Well, our life was really quite normal. The kids went to regular Chinese public schools. We okay. just stuck them in Chinese public schools, and that was hard at first, but they yeah. definitely adapted. And I taught. I taught uh, English at a Chinese Imagine university. Imagine that. You taught. I taught. Yep. Yeah. Transferable skill. Mm -hmm. And my husband worked remotely for his U.S.-based company, okay. so that was super convenient. So we had sort of a regular life. Monday through Friday, but on the weekends we traveled oh, awesome. all over Asia Very and went cool. to India and Nepal and Vietnam and Cambodia oh. and Laos and Burma. And what was, was your favorite fantastic. thing from all your weekend vacations, um, weekend travel trips? All my weekend travel trips. Um, I think it was being able to see the children experience different cultures, nice, yeah. things that were outside of the normal life they would be having were they in the United States and cool. sort of began to appreciate things they had at home and learn to love things about new cultures yeah. more and kind of just expand their horizons. Right. That was really great. Yeah. yeah. And then out of that, you wrote a book. I did. Correct? We have the yes, book? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, there it is. Awakening East. Yes. So tell me a little bit about the book. Okay. Well, we went to China and I did not intend to write a book okay. at all. Um, I'm sort of a natural writer. I'm trained as a writer as well. Um, so when we were there, I was blogging a lot, okay. kind of about our adventures. Yeah. And we would have these crazy things happen because you're living in a communist country and it's just so ridiculous and wild and silly. And so these blogs were really well received by people at home. And we came home and I sort of had this chronicle of our year. 
And everybody kept saying, you should really put this into a book. Okay. It's a really great story. And I wasn't convinced, but then I sort of filled in the first part of the story, which was how we came to adopt our kids and okay. what that journey was like. And then how that led into the decision to move to China with them. And all of a sudden I had what looked like a book. No. Yeah. Just kind of happened. It just kind of happened. You didn't even know you were writing a book I didn't even while know you wrote it. a book. That's the best Isn't way that, to write a book. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So how, how old are your kids now? So I have a 13-year-old son okay. and an 8-year-old daughter. And how old were, were they when you all went to China? When we were there, my son was 10 and my daughter was 5. Okay. So yeah. has that given them a different outlook on things or a different, or how has your family dynamic or yeah. culture looked at now? Yeah, I think they definitely are more capable of undergoing really stressful, hard travel <laughs> to funny places where they have to go to the bathroom in a hole in the ground yeah. and not in a flush toilet kind of thing. They're really flexible that way. Um, but I think they're also just more curious about the world. Okay. And they've definitely maintained the Chinese that they learned. So I feel like they have a much more global view and I hope that that sticks with them. Awesome. Any yeah. plans to go back to China or any, what's your future plans? Yeah, we would love to live abroad in another country someday, okay. maybe, maybe not China, maybe something a little more cush, okay. like Italy or somewhere where there's good food and reliable <laughs> phone service. Yeah. Somewhere a little At bit more point. modernized. Yeah. Just a yes. Bit. Not third world, yeah. more like first world. Yeah. Awesome. And then where yeah. can people find your book? They, they can want. find it on a few different places. It's in tattered cover if they're local to Denver. Okay. It's on my website, which is joannagarten.com, and it's on Amazon. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for yeah, joining thank us. Thank you for We've having me. Yeah. All right. Uh, stick around. We still have Avarine to perform next.